title of our message is Supporting Jesus' Shoulders. You say, well, that's a strange thought. Good, just stick with me. You can't leave or you're going to miss out on this fantastic answer. All laughing aside, I'm telling you, we have to understand the principles that I'm sharing with you if we're going to change America again. And it's already on its way to change. We just have to let the momentum continue to build. Upon that topic, supporting Jesus' shoulders, I turn to Isaiah 9, chapter 6, uh, verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, talks about in verse 7 that the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. But I'm telling you, without those who are in his place, taking their place, it won't happen. That's why I'm bringing the message I am today. In the seventh chapter of Isaiah, seventh chapter, verse 14, it says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's Jesus. That is 740 years before Jesus was born. 740 years and they're saying that the government will be upon his shoulders. Very important position. The government was and still is on his shoulders. And the church has forsaken him in his position to a great deal. In fact, they don't even want to talk about government because it's, we don't want to talk about, pu about public positions of politics, you know. Let me tell you, we are not political, we're biblical. And I want to drive that into your hearts this morning. The prophets were God's directors in government issues. All through the Old Testament, the prophets spoke as God's voice to the people. And the people then were to follow through and fulfill that government responsibility that Jesus would carry when he came into life. When kings ignored the prophets, God stepped in and God turned a king into an animal in the field for seven years till he came to his senses. In Daniel's day, you remember that story? Seven years like a wild animal out in the field. I almost said, Lord, I pray for a new, well, I won't get into that this morning. But I think that would draw a lot of attention if there were people that hit the bottom because they didn't reach for the top. And we have to be there. You say, now you're getting political. And as I say, no, I'm getting biblical. The government shall be upon his shoulders. You say, well, that was on him. So stick with me. We get through this. In John 14, John 14, verse 1 through 6, these words. Let me read it for you. Verse 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus knew that he was going away. And in the next few verses, the pattern is made very clear. And that's the part that I want to stress and get into today with you. In chapter 14, let me begin with verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Now get the picture of this. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does 
the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, for, or else believe me for the sake of the words themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. We are doing his works. We are lifting his shoulders that are on his shoulders. The government is on his shoulders. We have to be involved in government if we're going to fulfill what Jesus talked about. We have to. He will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Oh, there's going to be a departure. He's gone. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. The Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That's the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him. And I want you to get this line because it puts you in a place of responsibility along with every single one of us. Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, that's all around you, and will be in you. The Holy Spirit, that's his responsibility. He said he would dwell in you. If he is in me, then I must carry out his work. And the government is on his shoulders. Church, the government's on our shoulders. There's no way around it. The responsibility is there. It's a very clear position, and we have to take care of it. In John 17, 20 through 24, John 17, let me turn back to it, 17, uh, 20 through 24. I got some of my, my things mixed up here. So John 17, 20 through 24. About to get to it here. Here we go. It says, most assuredly I say to you that you will weep. No, wait a minute. 17 chapter, verse 20. I'm getting off on the wrong page. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are one in me. Now get the picture. Jesus is talking here, it's red letters, as you, Father, are one in me. He was saying that he was operating in the Father's ability, power, and manifestation, even though he was God with the Father. He said, and, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. There we are again, one in us. We are in Christ. He is in us that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may one just as we are one. He says, I am going to be one with my people that I have redeemed by dying for them, taking away all their sin. I want just like the Father and Jesus are one. That's real. That is real. We are in Christ and we are carrying out his responsibility on earth. What a picture that is. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am and that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. This is a long-term planning program. God had it all worked out. Jump to the 15th chapter of John, verse 26 through 27. John 15, 26 through 27. But when the Helper, that's the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I shall send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. 
and you will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. It's a clear pattern. Move over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. These words. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, but you were bought at a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify him. What he's saying here, don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? He's living in you. And who is the Holy Spirit? He's who Jesus sent to take his place. Because he said, I can only be in one place at a time. But the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at one time. And more than that, he not only is everywhere you go, but he's in you wherever you go. He's in you. So that we are representing Christ everywhere we go. We have an assignment. It's our responsibility. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. Ephesians 6, 19 through 20, these words. Now, when we are ambas- now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who know no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So what's our responsibility? We are declaring and teaching righteousness in Christ's place. He's not here, but we are because he's in us. We are leading a nation to righteousness. Our nation was founded on God from the very beginning. Paul recognized his responsibility to speak and influence as a voice and as a representative of Christ. Church We are representatives of Christ. We're not just members of Faith Center. We're members of the body of Christ, and we are his representatives. So we're to be doing what his assignment was. The government will be on your shoulders. Don't tell me we can't be in politics, because I know we're not, but we are biblical And if we forget our biblical position and forget all the other assignments of Democrats, Republicans, neutral, know this, know that, whatever it is, if we understand that we are not functioning as a political process, we are functioning as the representative of Jesus Christ who has a government responsibility that we must fulfill. Can't avoid it. It's clear. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 through 21. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20 through 21. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's our cry to the nation. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And what are we to do with that righteousness but spread it everywhere we go? Raise the level of society to a righteous position. That's our responsibility. We've got our work cut out for us. And we don't like to face it because, oh, that's political. No, it's biblical. Let's get biblical and we'll be blessed. When I read that as ambassadors, we don't just look after ourselves. We are to influence many. How can we do that if we don't take a responsibility as running for a position of authority so that you can use that authority for kingdom values? That's natural. It's very clear. In Galatians 2.20, these words, Galatians chapter 2 Verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We know that we are alive physically. Nobody has to tell us that. They see us, they hear us, 
They can feel us. We shake hands. We know we are alive physically, but who we were is gone. Now Christ lives in us. The world has been set aside in our lives. It creeps in every now and then, and we got to see if that's set, straightened out, and we do. That's the past. Now it is Christ in you who is the hope of glory. He lives in us. He's taken residence in us. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we're carrying out the government that is on his shoulders, and we're responsible for it. Can't avoid it. If Christ lives in us, we must flavor every area of life. Matthew 5, 13. Flavor every area of life. Here it is, verse 5, 13 of Matthew. These words. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing. Church, I'm afraid for a large part the church has been good for nothing for the flavor of the salt that we are to be in the earth. It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. Wow. It's time we take a whole new view of our responsibility for the government that we're in. We have responsibility. The term in Christ, that, that term, just in Christ, where I find those two words together in the Bible, is used 87 times. We are in Christ, and he is in us. So that where we go and what we do, we do in him. For his glory, fulfill his purpose, and lift the load of his shoulders as we take care of it, loving our God. Proverbs 29, verse 2 says, yeah, Proverbs 29, verse 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. And if that isn't true, we've been groaning for a long time. It is time we begin to lift the shoulders of Jesus. And we say, we're here to represent you. We'll do our best. That means we have to be active, involved, and not back away and give excuses, but to do something for kingdom purpose. God expects his church and his people to lead biblically in government, not to be influenced by parties or other situations, but we are influenced by our biblical mandate. And we can't escape it. If you want heaven to be your home, then you're going to serve the Lord with all of your heart. And part of it is influencing the government we're in so that it will bless people instead of tearing people's lives apart. And we see so much of that. No other nation in the world has been blessed like America. No other nation. In God we trust. One nation under God, indivisible. We, we make that every time we, we, we salute the flag as if we get up. We have a responsibility, church. And how many times have I touched on political things and somebody leaves the church because, oh, we're getting into politics. No, we're getting biblical. And I must stand for biblical values. And this morning I wanted to explain it to you so you understand it's not only a privilege, it's an obligation. It's an assignment. Very clear. In Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 32 through 34, it says, What you have in your mind shall never be when you say we will be like the Gentiles, or in other words, the world system, like the families in other countries serving wood and stone. Now, this is in the Old Testament. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out, I will rule over you. 
I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out. God said, I'm going to do it. Everything within him. And what did he do? He began to bring Israel back together again. The nation. Thank God that things are happening for Israel today on behalf of the blessing of America that we're very grateful for because that means God blesses us when we bless Israel. If it was true then that God was in charge and assignments were made, it is even more sure after Jesus came with the government on his shoulders and then he abides in us and says, carry it out. Do what I have done. That's our responsibility. I have, I'm going to use the term, I have dodged this issue as much as possible because I know it upsets some people. I said, why do I dodge it any longer? I'm going to make it clear to you that we have a responsibility. We are not political. We are biblical. And we will follow the word. It means more to me than anything else that I please the Lord, nothing else. That's Dodge and Cannon. Father, you made this nation great from the very beginning. You raised us up to be superior to other nations that have been going for years, hundreds of years. And it was all built upon your name. In God we trust. And we thank you for blessing America. Oh, how we thank you for blessing America. We thank you that you have poured out your blessing upon this nation like no other nation has enjoyed. And I thank you that today, as we understand our responsibility, we will be more diligent in carrying the shoulders of Jesus into society and changing the future because you are in us, Holy Spirit, and we must obey you and walk in your power. So as we Leave today. Let your anointing rest upon each one, we pray. Amen.